Well, good morning, and welcome to TED Talks with Dawson. On behalf of all of us, thanks for coming in for rainy day. I want to talk about an ageless practice that is found in all cultures and in all forms of creative expression. The practice I'm speaking about <coughs> certainly addresses the topic of this TEDx series, Connecting the Dots. This practice derives its name from the Latin verb narrar, meaning to tell, and the adjective naras meaning knowing or skill. Of course, I'm speaking about creative narrative construction, storytelling. Storytelling is found in speech, song, writing, film, theater, and the visual arts. It's the way we express ourselves, imagining the world, constructing it, and explaining it, trying to understand the world we live in and the way we live in it. Narrative depends on structure, mainly a beginning, a middle, and an end, <laughs> but not necessarily in that order, according to Jean-Louis uh, Bidard, the New Bellevue filmmaker from France. The elements of uh, narrative include character, conflict, and resolution, with the added information that comes from setting, point of view, and atmosphere. I want to talk about a novel way to enter into the creation of narrative. And the important thing to remember about narrative, or pardon me, about creation, the creative process, is the element of play. And so I want to begin the discussion with a common deck of playing cards. Cards start to find themselves in China in the 9th century, and by the 11th century have covered most of Asia. In the 14th century, cards enter Egypt through, uh, each, they enter Europe through Egypt, and in France, the common suites of uh, clubs, spades, diamonds, and hearts are pretty well universal. The idea to use the playing card as a device for creative narrative construction came from a project that I undertook some years ago. I uh, on jump stores, and one day I was walking through one and I discovered a lovely set of playing cards that I thought I could do something with. So I decided to create a little project around them, put the cards in my pocket. And as I walked around a bunch of friends and acquaintances, I asked them, would you like to participate in a art project? If they agreed, I asked them to choose a card. They had the opportunity to change that card if they so wished. When they finally took the card, I said, please make an intervention in that card and return it to me. <clears throat> now, they could do anything they wanted to the card as long as it maintained some sense of its original identity. The cards were returned to me. I rented a gallery space, mounted the long cards on the wall, and invited people to a party where they could arrive and find their own cards and the, those cards of the others who participated, all now reassembled as a complete deck. Now at the time I was teaching creative uh, video production, an introductory course, and I found that students were having trouble with creating simple narratives. So I thought I could use that original card project, adapt it, and help to solve this problem. So the beginning of the next term was a brand new class. In the first class, I distributed randomly cards to each of the students in the class. I asked them to create a character from that card. Do anything they wanted to the card, also to write a brief character description and a backstory to that character. I'll come back the next week. So this is the first example I want to show you. This is the card turned into a character. When they came to class, they presented them, discussed them, and then I distributed a second random card and said, I want you to put that character card into conflict. Now, the conflict could be another character, a force, an event, whatever they wished, make the interventions in it. Here's the second card, the character. The ten and the two, too far apart, obviously referring to the numbers themselves, but I think you get the idea. The last time I did was ask them to create a resolution to this conflict and make interventions as needed. And this is the resolution to that particular example. Now, two other examples of cards I'd like to show you, <coughs> people did. Here, the Eight of Diamonds. Clearly, the student interpreted it as crazy eights to begin with, not knowing they're going to have to put the card into conflict in the second meeting. When they came to choose their second card, a Four of Diamonds, there was some perplexion about what this was interpreted, how this meant. This is a good example of how this exercise 
enhances and it suggests that you do some research on the cards, looking up its face value, trying to understand the, the color of the suit, its place. And as you know, cards have associations and nicknames and places and all kinds of cultures. So the student had to go and do some research. So I'll just remind you what the former card was an eight. He discovered that in Chinese popular culture, eight is a sign of good luck. It's a lucky number. It's a sign of life, of, of, of happiness. But the second card, the four, is quite the opposite. It's a sign of bad luck, death perhaps, misfortune. So the resolution, life triumphs over death, good fortune triumphs over uh, fate. The third card, a rock band. Four characters, the four of spades, identify as one, two, three, and four. An independent group of musicians who really want to get out there and try to make it. But typically in the music business, who do they meet? The Jack of Diamonds. An ordinary record producer who wants to take all his money from them, control them. You can see the puppet working there. Uh, everything will be okay, but you know we're going to rip you off. So what is their resolution? To make an independent video, put it on the net, and call it creepy record producer. <laughs> it gets three million hits and is a success. So there's an idea of how these things can unfold, the creation of narratives, looking at the issues that are important. It's a novel approach to narrative creation. Narrative occupies a large part of our worlds. Our lives are determined by the stories we tell. We're constantly making and remaking, retelling the stories that we have. The card itself acts as a portal, an, an effort to achieve uh, insight into the characters of the cards that we create into the world that we create through this narrative construction. Um, I want to thank the people who helped me create this work, and I'd like to thank you very much for attending.